very welcome to this webinar, everybody. This is the, the first webinar of the new Amatuba webinar series that we are kicking off. Um, this is a repeat of the previous Bright, Brightspace webinar series. As most of you know, um, Brightspace is the platform and UCT chose to rebrand it as Amatuba to give it a local name. And we are two presenters here today um, on this first webinar focusing on navigating through Amatuba, it's myself, Nadina Haman, and Lauren Butler, and we are learning designers at the Center for Innovation in Learning and Teaching, um, in based in Ched at UCT. Um, um, okay, so we asked everybody to quickly just see if you are able to log in. Um, so if you are not able to log in, please just put in the chat if you run into issues so that we can see if we can support you. Um, for those of you that joined a bit late, um, I'm going to repost the link in the chat. You can just access as a UCT staff member, you should have um, default access. Maybe if you're watching this webinar at a, a later stage, please feel free to retype um, the link that is currently on the screen, just amatuba.uct.ac.za forward slash d2l forward slash login, one word, um, and that should take you to, to the Amatuba homepage, the, the official course landing page. Okay, so we asked you also, where are you at in terms of the migration process? where UCT is at it with the migration process currently is that our pilot courses, um, there's slightly less than 50 courses that's currently active on Amatuba. We are entering the exam phase right now. And so most of those courses, we have gotten feedback from both students and the lecturers in terms of their teaching and their learning experiences. And we try to incorporate that feedback. So it's quite an active and an involved process from SILT side where we want to provide as much support as possible in the migration process. And um, if, you, if your courses are not earmarked to migrate first semester 2023, it doesn't mean that you cannot play around on Amatuba and start to get familiar with the digital learning platform. There are other options available. We have opened the, this current webinar series for anybody at UCT that would want to attend. You are welcome to register for any or all of the webinars. All of them will be recorded and uploaded to, to SIL's YouTube channel um, for re-watching re at later um, stages um, at your own leisure. There's also a self-based training course on Amatuba. Um, this presentation will be sent to you afterwards and you can access the link, but in the course we can, or in the chat, maybe we can also just paste the link to the self-based training course. If you are enrolled as, or as a staff member at UCT, at a later stage, I'm going to show you where the course selector tool is and by default, you should be enrolled in this course. So we will check on that during the presentation. And then there's also on SILT's webpage, there's a whole page of staff resources where we focus on various things from pedagogy right through to, um, I want to say, technical aspects of Amatuba um, to provide you the best support in terms of your migration and your teaching experiences. Um, right. So what are we going to look at um, in this webinar today? Just some objectives. Um, by the end of this webinar, you should be able to be comfortable navigating the common elements of Amatuba, um, identify and broadly distinguish between the different roles, because um, you can be enrolled in different roles in Amatuba. We're going to map VULA tools against Amatuba options for those of you that have taught on VULA before, just to orientate yourself in terms of the landscape. And then also how to customize your account settings and set up your personal profile to reflect your preferences or personalize your Amatuba experience. Okay, so just briefly in, in the chat, um, uh, just a waterfall exercise. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the waterfall. That means you can type your answer, but just hold on. Don't press enter um, until we say you can go. And um, the question I want to pose to you is Amatuba is a new adventure. And whenever you face a new challenge, how do you prepare? So I prepare by. I'm just going to give a few minutes, moments that you can just quickly type your answers in the chat.
Okay, I'm going to count us down three, two, one. Feel free to hit the enter. Okay, let's quickly see. Getting ready about orientating myself or reading up, yes. Okay, reading a lot about the opportunity, by reading about the new adventure to understand what to expect. I prepare by reading, testing, talking to other people who know more than I do. Yes, all, all that has gone through the experience. And I prepare by reading and practicing as much as I can. Yes, and today this is what we want to provide to you. Is um, This is not a reading, um, this is a, a visual reading of sorts. Um, so what we're going to provide to you. But as I said, those staff resources, it's wealth of information, how to guides literally with step-by-step -step instructions for each of the, the um, tools that you're going to need on your Amatuba journey. Okay, I'm going to quickly hand over to Lauren and Lauren will just give us a, an overview of Amatuba and then also focusing on the rules. Okay, <clears throat> thank you Nadine. Um, I want to check if anyone has any questions at this point. If you do have any questions during the time that we are presenting, please don't hesitate to, to stop us. Um, we're a small group, so we can address as many of your queries as possible. Um, or you can um, type something into the chat. We can, whoever is not presenting, will pick it up in there. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Right, so um, okay, uh, I see your your comment there, Michelle. Um, perhaps Nadine could look into that. Um, for now, okay. Yeah, I'll send a message to Michelle right now. Thank you. Okay, so um, since this is a a, a an overview of Amatuba, like the navigating Amatuba to the bare basics. It's um, a, a, an introduction to Amatuba. Um, I want to talk a bit about how Amatuba is different from um, Vela and the things that you have access to that will be different, nicer. Um, some things will work in a different way that you might need to get used to and that might not be so nice for a while. But um, in, in essence, Amatuba provides for students a much more consistent student experience. And from the lecturer point of view, it's a more straightforward experience. So for students, they have a consistent way of navigating the courses. Um, we will we will point out to you where that consistency exists um, so that you can know as well what it is that students will see that they won't ever have to doubt will be in that in that spot on the Amatuba interface. Um, then students can also see that the class progress tool, um, which gives them an overview of what they have completed so far and what they still need to complete. Um, it's a very, very nifty, comprehensive tool that gives them, um, that will help them with planning and tracking of where they are at in all of their different courses. And then there's a mobile app. It's called Pulse. Um, they can find it on any app store that they have access to. And the app will give them a view of their course calendars, the readings, the assignments, any evaluations, the grades or the announcements, so everything that students will have access to on their device, the laptop or um, a PC that they use, they will also be able to access on the app, which is nice because then when they are waiting for a dummy, for example, they can quickly read through announcements or take a look at discussions and they can also um, participate via the app. So they can participate in discussions. They are able to um, complete a quiz, for example. So they can um, do those things on the app, but we don't advise them completing high stakes activities like assignments that will count a big part of their grade, for example. We don't advise that they do that on the mobile app. And then from the lecture experience, um, the first point is actually a 
a good thing for both students and lecturers. So because Amatuba is cloud hosted, it has 99.9% .9 uptime. So the maintenance can happen um, outside of the, the it, it doesn't have like Vula has um, frequent maintenance slots, for example. And during that time, Vula is not available. And that won't happen with Amatuba because it's cloud hosted. Um, and then it also has improved student analytics and tracking that you can use for students in your class. And um, there's a built-in accessibility checker that's very easy to use. You check a button and then it will take a look at what's on your site on that page and um, tell you what's wrong in terms of accessibility. For example, the color contrast may not be good enough. Then they can, then it also tells you how to fix it. So you can immediately fix that item on your page. It's very, very easy to restructure content. You, you can drag and prop it. We will show you in, in coming webinars, you will be able to see how the content can be moved around. And then whether your course is a, a simple, straightforward one or a complicated one with lots of lesson pages, for example, the building of it is easy. It's straightforward. Um, we have heard from people working on Ama Amatuba so far that it's very intuitive. It's very user friendly. Um, so I, I, I'm hoping that you will find it the same. Lauren, there's um, a question in the chat. Uh, um, Michelle is asking, why can't they use the mobile app um, for assignments if they don't have a laptop? Um, they are meant to have a laptop. All students are meant to have laptops. Um, if they don't, UCT does provide laptops. So um, it's unlikely that students won't have laptops, I think. But um, um, in most cases, assignments count for quite a big part of the class grade. And so it's just advisable in terms of reducing risk, um, making sure students are able to, to do an assignment properly, to fulfill all of the requirements for that assignment. Um, and they, it, it's just easier on a laptop to do that. Um, okay. I'll move on to, so um, the roles that are available in Amatuba are very similar to the roles available in, in Vula. You have the lecturer and the support staff role, which um, will have, give you access to everything on Amatuba that you need access to in terms of creating items, um, viewing certain items, so it, it's full access for those roles. And the tutor role will be able to create and edit announcements, um, include calendar events, edit grades, view and mark assignments, um, including quizzes and rubrics, self-assessments. They can view and um, edit checklists, surveys. They can reply to discussions. The, the, um, thing that they are not able to edit will be the content tool. So the content tool is similar to Villa lessons um, and tutors won't be able to edit that. And students will have access to everything you need them to have access to, announcements, discussions, groups, calendar. Um, and then of course, they're also only able to view content. They won't be able to edit the content. And then the observer role, similar to what's available in Vula, and they are able to view the things that you have added to your course site. Um, you, in, in Amatuba, you can also hide certain items um, in the content tool. So whatever you don't want students or the observer to, to see, um, you can toggle a little button in the content tool that will hide the item. Um, and I think the content webinar is tomorrow, Nadine. Am I right? Yes. So tomorrow's webinar at one o'clock as well. Um, you will find out more about the content too if you are able to make it. Or um, you can watch the recording on, on the Sort YouTube channel afterwards. Okay, so here is a list um, 
of the tools available on Vila and then on Amatuba. And we have found this to be useful for people to orientate themselves moving from Vila to Amatuba, um, coming from where they're at into the new platform. Most tools will work in the same way. Um, announcements will work the same, assignments will work the same, blogs, calendar. In, in Amatuba, there's no chat room, um, but we um, suggest that you use the discussions tool or MS Teams chat. And Teams can be embedded directly into your Amatuba page. So it will give students um, quite easy access to Teams if you want to use that for a chat. We are also um, investigating further tools that can be used for chatting on Amatuba. Um, the course outline tool in Vula will convert to the content tool in Amatuba. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the tools. This particular document is available on the SORT website as well, but you, you can um, access it as a PDF and you can go through all of the tools that um, that we have on Vula and the equivalent or the workaround on Amatuba. The next page is also a further list of the tools. Um, so we, you can, Nadine, if you don't mind, I'm popping the link to um, our SOAP webpage where the staff resources are so that people are able to access that if they want to. Okay, and this is a a brief look at the app. Um, I have added some screenshots of what it looks like on, on a phone, on, on a mobile phone. Um, so students are able to see all of their courses that they are enrolled in. They can click on that course and they can go into the content of um, what's in that course. So they can also see um, upcoming items in, in their calendar view. They can see a graphical view of the workload for the week. They can view the notifications of things or any announcements that's been written. Um, and then they can also view content and grades. They can view and reply to discussions. Um, so we are hoping that, that students really take on the app um, and to, to help them access their content and activities quite easily um, going forward. Uh, Lauren, right. can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Yes. Um, do we need to put in our course outlines that they must uh, log in to Pulse? Is this something that students are going to know? They will know that via the orientation. So all of the first year students will have the normal orientation that they go through and included in that will be um, um, like all about Amatuba. Um, and they will be, so they will definitely be exposed to the app at some point during that orientation. But it, it won't hurt for you to also tell them about it. <laughs> Great, thank you. Okay. Um, Okay, so we're the next section, we're quickly going to, we'll um, switch presenters and I will talk you or take you through a quick Amatuma demonstration. So I'm going to share live my screen. If you are able to and if you want to, please feel free to follow along in your own environment and you can do that um, using the, the Amatuba self-based training link. Um, Lauren, Michelle just has access issues. Thank you. Um, I, yeah, I'm not okay. enrolled in the right role for the purpose of this webinar, um, which you will all see just now. Um, we thought it well to just also share a screenshot with you before we actually go into Amatuba itself. Um, we work from the, the assumption at this stage that most of you haven't logged into Amatuba. So if you have, we're just going to talk you slowly through everything so that you know exactly how to navigate um, the new digital learning platform. So we are going to refer mainly to four tools in this webinar. The first one is the mini bar. Now the mini bar is always at the top and it's fixed. 
Um, that doesn't change as you move between different courses. Um, you will see, I will show you what changes um, in some of, for example, with a nav bar. But for the mini bar, you have a fixed one. The only thing that will change is the name of the course that you're currently on, where in this case, this is a screenshot of the Almatuba self-based training site. Um, then the nav bar situated directly under the mini bar. And um, so the nav bar, there are two nav bars that we're going to look at depending on where you're at in Amatuba. There's a course banner, very nice, um, similar to Vula, but you can, you can go and create a beautiful course banner um, or select a relevant image um, depending on the copyright, you know, just make sure that you, you have um, permission to use the image, but you can, I want to say, create your own look and feel for a course. And then... At the bottom is the course homepage. The rest of the page is what we refer to as the course homepage. And on this page, you will see those blocks. We refer to these blocks as widgets. Um, so that's just a, a technical term um, from user design. And uh, without further ado, let's go into the live environment. Those of you that want to follow along in the self-based training sites, um, feel free to do so. So I'm quickly going to share my screen. Just need to grab the right screen here. Okay, can you see my screen, everybody? Okay. okay. So this is now, as you can see, this top bar here. Um, can you follow along my cursor, right? Um, so this top bar is the mini bar on my two bar. You will see there's no title at this stage. There's no course title yet. And this is because I'm currently in the course landing page, the main Amatuba landing page. I haven't, that means that I haven't selected, I'm actually not in a course yet. If you want to go to the similar place, all you need to do is you can simply just click on Amatuba, the logo. When you hover with your mouse over it, you will see that there appears text, a pop-up text that says my home. And this is what it's the, the um, logo is actually called, it's my home icon. And if you click on it, it will always, so you can, whenever, wherever you are in Amatuba, as soon as you click on the Amatuba icon, it will bring you back to this page. I want to say this is the very, very big, this is almost the cabinet in which you're going to store all your files, your files being each of your courses then. Um, so next to this one is what we call the course selected tool. In some instances, you will also hear people refer to this as the waffle tool for some very odd reason. If you like Belgian waffles, um, it looks like a, a waffle. If you click on this, it says select a course. I'm going to give you a moment if you're following along. Then a drop down will appear with all the courses that you have access to. It is possible for you to have different roles within Amatuba. I, for example, have been enrolled as a student on the self on the, the Amatuba self-based training site, but in Design Studio, for example, I'm enrolled as a lecturer. That means that it would look slightly different and my permissions um, also would look slightly different within those courses. Very just easy things to notice here. Um, you can search for a course. If you just quickly, you can see if I scroll down here, I'm enrolled in quite a few courses. So if I want to quickly go for Design Studio, I just simply type it in the search bar, press enter, and there's now a short list with all the courses that has Design and Studio in it. And if I want, you can see here, yeah, I can go and I can select a design studio. This is the one that I'm actually looking for. I'm not going to click on it right now. We'll look at that a bit later. Something else to notice here is that you can pin courses if you have many courses, the ones that you want to prioritize. Um, just if it's highlighted, if it's colored in, you will see um, these two are pinned. So if I go out of my search bar and I clear the search, go back to the waffle tool, You can see all my pinned courses are at the top here. And as I scroll down, I know my computer doesn't want to refresh. There, if I scroll down, you can see everything that's unpinned would be, and that's as easy as just like selecting pin, unpin, just clicking on the pin icon. 
next to the waffle tool, the course selector tool. Uh, the course selector tool is something that you're most probably going to use a lot, especially if you have more than one course um, jumping between, between the various courses. Um, next up is the subscription alerts. Anything that you subscribe to, this is more, I want to say, applicable to students. If there's a very interesting thread, a discussion thread or something that they want to subscribe to, or maybe a blog post, whenever another student posts in that thread, it will notify them. Next to this, you can also see all the pop-ups. It tells you exactly what it's called, update alerts. The update alerts, um, if there's a new announcement that's coming through, it will appear there will be an orange dot. Um, I think in the screenshot, the orange dot shows quite clearly. So um, if you want to, that that will just be an, it's almost like those WhatsApp, it just doesn't have a number in, but to, to show you there's something to pay attention to. I'm not going to click into all these things. Um, you feel free to, to do that in your own environment. And um, next up is your profile. Um, so here where you focus on the profile section, I would strongly encourage you also to go and do your name should by default appear there. Please go and add a photo of yourself um, just to make it easier for students to recognize you, um, especially first year students or students that are new to your course. I would strongly recommend that if you click on the profile, very in, um, important to note here is this is the place where you would jump between your view as student and view as instructor. And um, so at this stage, um, you can see if I click on view as student, um, I'm not in a course right now, you will see that it changes, my photo is not showing anymore, and you can just revert back by clicking in the same place um, to go back to your role as an instructor there. I can just click on the X to go out and back into my instructor role. Yeah, if you click on profile is where you can go and you can add your photo, you can also select your um, preferred pronouns should you wish to. There's various things that you can add there to personalize your own settings, the notification settings, account settings where you can change even the font, um, the font size, um, local, you can set your by default at this stage, you are set in South Africa. Um, Cape Town time. However, maybe if you go on a sabbatical, you have a different time zone and you want to change that for, for example, for that reason, and you are also um, welcome to do that. This is also where you would log out. Um, if you work from your own personal computer, there's no reason for you to log out. Um, Amatuba will automatically log you out after a certain amount of time and um, just for safety reasons. And that means that you will just need to, to click through um, it's just going to ask you to open in another window. It's just a, an added layer of security that's automatically built in. Okay, so that is covering basically the, um, the mini bar. If we move over to the nav bar, what's interesting is that the more you're going to spend time on Ambatuba, the more comfortable you're going to get with the environment. But there are actually many, many people don't recognize or realize this from the word um, get go. There are two um, nav bars. The first one is commonly referred to as the global nav bar. The global nav bar, this is remember if I'm in the overall Amatuba landing page. I'm not in a course yet. There's no course name displayed yet. And here it has very high level resources that's available to you as an instructor. Brightspace resources, as we said in the beginning, Brightspace is the platform. So they have additional help resources. Butzel has worked really, really hard in, I want to say, personalizing um, the resources that's tailored exactly to how we have changed the environment for our purposes and to, stu to, need our, to meet the needs of both our lecturers and our students. So, but if you click on the drop down, you will see there's getting started resources for instructors, learners. Um, I would strongly encourage you to rather go to the Amatuba resources for staff. I'm quickly just going to jump there. You will see the resources here. There's some videos already that's been shot in our One Button Studios. There's a getting started tool. Um, there's a quick guide. There's a getting started comprehensive guide, staff orientation course, and the Amatuba and Vula tool comparison that Lauren shared with us earlier. And yes, all the various tool guides. So for each of these things that we're going to look at in the webinars, there's already a how-to um, guide as well.
Okay, so the calendar discover, if you want to discover some courses that I want to say you're automatically enrolled in, you can go and look there. The quick eval and the student support, we're not going to focus on these things in detail in this webinar for the, for the purposes of just navigating. Um, my courses here, you will see now this will differ for each person depending on the permissions that you have to various courses. Um, the pin courses, as I've showed to you here in the Waffle 2, so this is exactly that list. It's just displayed in a different way. Um, it also shows you where there are some questions or where there's activities. I can go and I can simply, I want to say, have quick access to some of those things um, from this main page. Let's go and click into one of these courses. Um, let me see if I also check the self based because then you can, I will see exactly, you will see what I see. Okay, first thing to note here, you can see the name of the course is displayed here in the mini bar. That means that I'm now in this course. The nav bar has now quickly, um, briefly, it changed. So previously where it said in the global nav bar, where it said Brightspace help or something like that, Brightspace sources, you now have the option to go back to the course home. This is the course homepage. This will um, be available. And this is, I want to say, streamlined for student experience. So this nav bar in both instances will stay static for all students. So if they're in a course, whether they're in your course or another course in a different department, they will know exactly where to locate um, I want to say their assignments or their calendar, all these things will be in exactly the same place. So the course home is where you would go to and select here. It will take you to whatever is available in terms of the content that you've already populated as a lecturer. In this case, you can see there's a welcome to Amatuba, the migration process, there's the Amatuba tool guides and the page templates. And these are, like we said, they represent or replicate basically the previous lessons that we found in Vula. Okay. Um, something interesting about the course page, I'm going to scroll down just for you to orientate yourself. There is a quick guide that you can, that's optional, that you can select if you want to have a welcome message that pop ups to the students the first time they access the course, and then they can close it if they don't want the message to appear again. All announcements will feed into this course homepage. If you have populated your calendar, and that means that if an assignment has a set date, it will automatically pull through here to the calendar. If you want to post reminders to students, um, you can also post it here. And here's the quick guide again. And then there's work to do, there's the quick eval tool um, that will also be looked at in one of the next webinars um, at a later stage. I quickly just want to open another course as well for you just to show design studio i'm going to open this in a new link so you can see i can have more than one course open as well design studio one of the courses that silt also um, offers in terms of support for just guiding your content content creation redesigning your course um, if you scroll down there are different options for your course home pages um, this one, for example, has the profile um, the instructor profile that it includes. The challenge that we have in this course is that we are more than one um, facilitator. There's only a place for one facilitator buyer for this specific section. In the orientation template, there is ample place for you to introduce your whole team. If you go into, if you use the, the UCT orientation model that um, your learning designer will help you set up. Um, but if you go into manage course, you click on course admin. I want to say this is the back end students don't have access to this. And so as, as I want to say the designer of your own course, you can come here under site setup, you will find the course homepage link. And if you click on course homepage, it's going to display to you several options that you have um, to choose from. The default setting is the course homepage. That's a very simple layout, but basic things will always be there, like your lesson widgets, um, the units that you set, 
Um, then also the announcements in the calendar, those are default settings that will automatically be populated. In this case, you can see that number two is marked as active. It says that supports homepage with lecturer profile. I'm now going to go and change this to the course homepage. I just want to show to you there are other options. Number three here includes the lecture profile and MS Teams. If you want to activate MS Teams, you can select that. Um, there's a lecture profile with activity feed. Activity feeds where there's um, where people can comment on the homepage, uh, like a, a social media feed of sorts. Um, there's a course homepage just with MS Teams or just with activity feed. Um, so you can literally choose between these ones depending on what the needs are of your course. So I'm going to select the first one, course homepage, and apply that. You will see the page refresh. Now it says this one is active, number one, active with a tick mark. And if I go back to the course home, and I scroll down, you can see now that the instructor profile is gone. And this reflects better because we are three instructors in this course. Okay, so, and this is basically the same as you update in, in most LMSs, the, the changes are um, affected immediately. Okay, so that's the course homepage, the widgets I explained to you. Um, so, and whenever you click on these things, it will take you directly through to each of those. I want to say in tomorrow's webinar with building content, this will be the focus, how to navigate, how to create your course, how to create your lessons and how to work from there. Okay, um, back to, that was the, the mini bar at the top, back to the nav bar. If you look at the course homepage, as you saw when I click it, it brings you back to that courses homepage um, and the content of that course will be displayed here in the widgets. If I click on content, so please note the widgets are called, in this case, welcome. The second one gets started. There's module one, there's module two. I am now in instructor mode. If I go to content, again, this is the, the topic of tomorrow's webinar, but there you can see this more reflects, um, I want to say the VULA structure. Um, so, and in terms of if you, you prefer to see your content in a linear fashion, um, this is where you can access your content. Activities, I just want to note these drop-down menus in some instances, the drop-down menus just indicated by the drop arrow. So activities, things that students need to do, we've clustered together, that would be assignments, discussions, quizzes. So if a student doesn't want to go through all the content to get to that specific page, this is like a quick access for them. Course info, there's the announcements, the calendar, very applicable to, to the instructors, the class list, class progress, where you can see um, your students. And in each of these tools, we will drill down um, throughout the course um, of this webinar uh, series. Grace, that's your grade book. It doesn't have a, a drop down. So if I click on grades, it will just open that one. And then manage course. This is not available to your students. This is available to you as an instructor. And course admin, as I showed you earlier, that just takes you to the back end of many of the tools, um, content reports that will be generated, and um, intelligent agents. See, there it goes. Accidentally click that. So that's the report. And let me just get my apologies. So manage course, content, manage files, and just the, the backend structure of how you manage your files and quick eval tool also will be explained to you when we get to assessments. There's another um, link here to Brightspace Help. Um, if you want to make use of the generic D2L, D2L is the company that owns Brightspace. Um, so there's a wealth of resources available, um, but as I said, um, maybe just start with our Matuba resources. Um, it's not so overwhelming and it's tailored specific with screenshots of how the platform looks um, with uh, the UCT branding, etc. cetera. Um, at this Maybe. stage, are there any questions? Marianne has a hand up. Yes. Thanks. Yes, um, I, I can't see Design Studio. I mean, 
this what ah. you've been going through how do we get to it from this home screen oh dear design studios of course um if if you want to attend design studio um you're just in the nick of time so design studio is a course that runs over four weeks and the focus of design studio is to help you redesign your course especially i'm focusing on the blended environment um we focus more on the pedagogy and how to look through your course map you know planning your your course and then taking it through right through to assessments um if you are interested in design studio lawrence somewhere on the resources page there will be on the workshops there's going to be a sign up link to design studio you need okay, to sign so, up yeah so that so because that all looks very interesting in terms of designing the content but yes. I, I we at least on my current profile i don't okay. have access to that and no. then what i also don't have access to is on your home screen you have the little settings button right yes. Um, I don't have no. that settings button. So no. you you won't have that settings button because I'm enrolled in there are invisible roles in how much if I can say it like that. So us working on the back end of the back end of the courses, we are enrolled in what we call a designer role. Um, so but if I even if I click on the settings button, it's going to say admin tools, but if I click on course management, it's most likely going to give me a permission error. Um, so okay, so, so I'm not crazy that I don't nope. have that settings nope. round thing. I missed how one changes <laughs> one's profile from student to, to lecturer. Okay. So Thanks. let me quickly demonstrate that to you again. Um, so if you click here, um, first, if you're Wait, let me go. If you're here in the Amatuba landing page, the page where you're not in a course, you won't, it's going to struggle there, it says view as students. So simply if you click on your profile, it should give you. If, however, you are already enrolled as a student and not a lecturer, because if you're in the lecturer role, you can toggle between student and lecturer. For example, if I go to, we enrolled myself in the Amatuba self-based training course as a student. So if I go to, where is it here? The self-based one. If I now go and click on my profile, it's not going to give me that option because I'm only enrolled as a student. Okay, that's all I have on mine as well. Yes, because you are enrolled as a student. Um, so we are all by default enrolled as students on this course. However, for your own courses, for example, I'm enrolled as a lecturer on Design Studio. If I now go to Design Studio, do exactly the same exercise, and I click then again on my profile. Can you see there it says we are a student? Okay, so it's only at the point of migration with support from SILT that one would then be invited to be the lecturer on the course, and that hasn't happened yet in my particular case. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, Lauren, maybe do you want to quickly speak to that? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, you're right, Marion. So once your course um, have been, has been worked on and converted, um, to Amatuba, you will be contacted by a learning designer and you will be added to that course site. Um, and we are focusing specifically on the first year courses that need to be ready for teaching in 2023. Um, if you are, yeah, so for now, if you are not um, convening a first year course or teaching on a first year course, um, you probably, you're probably in a different phase of the migration, but what you can do is um, ask for, request a sandbox site. So we are making, or people are able to request a sandbox site, which is a play area. It's um, where you can go in and make mistakes. There won't be any consequences. You can figure out how Amatuba works, you can add things, you can delete things. Um, so if you would like a sandbox site, Nadine has just um, put the link in the chat where you can 
complete a form to request that site. Um, the, the forms are, um, what's the word? Um, gosh. So people, the, the help desk team um, is looking at the forms every Friday and they will then um, activate the sandbox sites. So if you complete the form now, um, you'll probably receive communication Friday or Monday early next week um, that your site is ready that you can go and play on it. But if you are convening a first year course, you will have access to that site over the next month or so um, as we continue working on the, the courses for, to convert them. No, thanks very much. I mean, I, I, I hear the priority um, for first year courses and I guess for students. And I guess in the meantime, any teaching I'm doing early um, February for masters, postgraduate, professional masters would just be using Vula at this point, unless I'm so masterful of sandbox that it can go <laughs> on to Amatuba. But I guess for now, it's gradually getting familiar with Amatuba. <laughs> Um, yes. and shouldn't put extra pressure on either yourselves or myself at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Yes. And, yes. and it's all also a negotiation process with, with the deputy deans. Um, I know some of the faculties have said outright they're not even, they're so overwhelmed, they're not even considering, whereas some faculties are more open. So if there are, want to say it's not an exclusive first-year migration, in some instances there are valid reasons why people are moving over to Amatuba earlier. Um, but from a student experience um, point of view, people are considering, um, you know, students struggling um, or managing more than one platform and where they're at in the process. So it's not impossible, but um, I would strongly encourage you make sure that you, you get up to date. And as you see, the, the resources are there. And if you are familiar with Vula, um, chances are that you will be able to migrate um, quite, you know, easily, I want to say cautiously, um, to, to Amatuba, depending on your, your level of comfort. Um, I like to always say it's like driving a car, you know, sometimes the clutch differs, or maybe this one is automatic and that one is not, and the button sits in a different place, but essentially it does the same job. It takes you from A to B. Um, and we really tried, as Lawrence showed, the, the comparison between the Vula and the Amatuba tools to, to keep it as consistent as possible so that we can still offer the same things, um, if that makes sense. Just a, a quick note on design studio. I've posted the link um, in the chat as well. Um, that you can go and, and read through the web page on your own time. Design Studio has two different types of offerings. The one is a cohort base, which is a four, four week course. There is also a self based version, but the self based version is literally nobody's really going. I don't, well, don't want to say nobody, but you, you travel through the course at your own pace. Um, so I strongly advise if you want to join Design Studio to sign up um, the, the first working session um, and that don't have to do anything for week. It would be Thursday. We just had a brief orientation ses session on Monday. And um, so you're not too late to join Design Studio, but I want to say from anybody that, that likes teaching and have a little bit of leeway, because I know time is of the essence, um, it, it definitely would be worth your while to, to go through, through that course as well. Are there any other questions? Or comments, maybe even. Nadine, I'm sorry to be another pest. Because yeah. <laughs> I can't get it in the chat. I've we we love you and you, so feel free. <laughs> I've been working through some videos that Diane sent me and setting up this and that. But there was one thing that really stressed me on my work today. Is that in grades and groups... I'm getting first name and then surname, and there are no student numbers. And I don't know if I'm v looking up to uh, penalties or anything, the, the view I say, I have mentioned it to Diane, um, but it's just really weird that there's no student numbers because I can have two Thomas Kirkmans. Um, 
I hear you. I'm used to V looking up to a unique number, which would have been the student number. I'm sorry to be a pain. No, you're not. I'm, I'm happy that you're raising that. So I haven't paid attention to that. And I see Lauren is also shaking her head. So Liz, maybe um, you say that you are working with Diane. So I'm happy. Yes. Um, I don't know if you sent us maybe screenshots and that we can address that also with um, this is why going through the pilot process and getting feedback from the lecturers is so imperative because sometimes we miss things um, that it could be either a setting or, you know, but just find out how we can address this. Um, and I want to say the, the, the sooner we know these things, um, the easier it is to, to address the, the problem. So please feel Sorry. free to, to send that also to SALT Help Desk. Um, I, would, okay. I, would, I would advise you to maybe do that and CC Diane so that yes. she's also in the loop, but um, that just means that the query goes also directly to, to the LT team, um, the learning right. technologist that, that works on these things specifically. Okay, so, great, because I uh, turn to people's marks with yes. you know, identifying feature is a little bit scary. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, we don't want the wrong, and then you have to, and then you have a student, and you mix marks. No, we don't want that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. I, I will do so. I'll do some screenshots, and I'll copy Diane in, and I'll send it to the team. And uh, I think, for, especially with courses over 450. Yes. We, you, you need an identifying factor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your advice and thank you for this today. I am learning everything um, as I go through these webinars. I'm really enjoying them. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's so lovely. You, I'm, I'm so happy that you you unmuted because, um, you know, it, it just makes it so much more interactive. Um, and we're here. So as, as I said, today is the first one of a series. Um, and maybe you cannot be in all of them, but the recordings are going to be available. Refer to these back as resources. As we've shown you, there's other resources available, but please keep, just keep sending the feedback. Um, but the platform is of no use to us if it's not working for you. Um, so you work with the students, and, and I want to say you're the first line um, working with students, and, and we're here to support you. So getting this feedback is, is crucial for us to make your experience and the students' experience um, as great as possible. I, I think, Nadine, the difference for me is that I am but what is called in my grade. I am an administrative assistant, so I'm not a lecturer, but in philosophy, we set everything up yes. for the lecturers. They just, they come in and lecture, so they don't deal with, yes. uh, they would, would have to deal with some content, but other than that, I set the stuff up. Um, so I suppose I've got a way of, you know, I like working out lateness penalties and, and many things that all require a student number being visible. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, no problem. I'll whack it in an email and, uh, and we'll go on. I'm quite excited. My conveners are uh, happy. Uh, with Amatoba, they are concerned about certain things like student numbers, uh, et cetera, but, um, but they're really loving the, the opportunities of the new platform. So, you know, you take the rough with the smooth. <laughs> no, definitely. And thank you for, um, I want to say, for persevering and for tackling on the, the the, or taking on the challenge um, with such a positive attitude. Um, yeah, this is what, what makes UCT goes, go forward. And um, yeah, we appreciate the work that all of you do. And thank you for staying. Um, have a, I want to say, have a, a beautiful rest of your Tuesday afternoon. Um, you as too. always. Hmm? You too. Yeah, thank you. Thank we you. will. And we, I hope we'll catch you in, in some of the other webinars. Yeah, I'm going to try and tend as that because even if you get a few bits of information that from what you've already trained on, it's like the Pulse app. 
Yes. That was brilliant. I mean, I had no idea of that. That was amazing. Yes. Um, you know, so you, you get stuff from everything that you attend. So thanks, True. guys. Yeah, welcome. And, and from here, I want to say spread the word, because the more people know, the better. That's how we're going to survive I, and thrive. I just think people have just got to shake up and wake up and realise this is coming <laughs> this semester. Because <laughs> I... I worry, I worry about all of your Januaries. <laughs> I really do. We're going to try and be head of the pack. <laughs> um, survive. <laughs> survive and thrive. So. And survive yeah. and thrive. Have a great, great afternoon, ladies. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.